There we go. At a clinic in Soreto Valley, a patient waits for her kidney dialysis treatment. Lucy, who doesn't want us to use her last name, suddenly lost her appetite a few weeks ago and had difficulty urinating. A blood test revealed her kidneys were failing. Lucy is only three years old. She's a German Shepherd cross. Nephrologist Sherry Ross says it's not clear why Lucy got sick. We think it may be due to an infection, which hopefully, because it was an acute episode, hopefully, hopefully she'll recover, and that's why we're dialyzing her in the hopes you know, to give her body a chance to heal itself. You ready? Animals that suffer from sudden kidney failure often recover quickly. Dr. Ross says we can learn something from that. We can look at how long it takes the kidney to recover from certain injuries and what, what the process is when they do recover. And so if a human has the same problem with a, with a drug or with a, a toxin, we can, we can look at that as, as far as recovery goes. The idea of using animals to improve the understanding of human health has been around for a long time. In fact, critics have objected to using animals for research that only benefits humans. But UC San Diego's new Center for Veterinary Sciences and Comparative Medicine has a different approach. It's exploring whether interdisciplinary biomedical research can lead to advances in both human and animal health. Yeah. Very good. The center includes a Sorrento Valley clinic and labs on the UC San Diego campus. The center's director, Dr. Peter Ernst, calls the strategy One Health. And the idea is to bring your collective expertise and perspective to a problem. And as uh, the problems are usually relevant for more than one species, then as solutions are developed, they're translated to their respective species more quickly. There's also a need to understand how an increasing number of diseases are jumping from animals to people. These include HIV, SARS, and West Nile virus. Dr. Ernst says investigating how to curb the spread of infectious diseases is especially important. And you could imagine trying to create vaccines for humans but if you immunize uh, animals, for example, you can block the transmission from animals to humans by protecting the animal. So that's an example of uh, uh, one health where you can uh, enhance the health of both species. Christina Sigurdsson is the center's co-director. She's researching a family of fatal neurodegenerative diseases that affect both animals and humans. Dr. Sigurdsson says the conditions are caused by misshapen proteins. So that when the cell that's normally supposed to make a protein that may look like this in an alpha helical form, the protein can become misfolded or misshapen into a form that instead looks like this. And these proteins then begin to stack on top of each other, forming these aggregated, large clumped structures. Dr. Sigurdsson says the buildup of proteins causes organ dysfunction and severe disease, often leading to death. They've caused mad cow disease in the UK. Um, we have a similar disease in the United States called chronic wasting disease that occurs in our deer population. So in some areas of Colorado, there are around a third of the deer that are infected with chronic wasting disease. Dr. Sigurdsson says sick deer could potentially infect scavengers, predators, and even hunters. Sigurdsson and her colleagues at the center don't make animals sick and then try to cure them. They're focused on studying naturally occurring conditions, like heart disease. Ten-year-old Clyde suffers from a thickening of the heart muscle, known as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's a good kitty. It's the most common type of heart disease among cats. It also affects about one out of every 500 people. It's all right, Clyde. That's it. Dr. João Orvalo says research into how the disease progresses in cats could shed some light on how it affects humans. So we just need to to a certain degree take advantage of the patients that we have with this disease and try to potentially extrapolate for uh, the patients in human medicine. Dr. Ernst says he hopes the center's unique focus on cross-species health will entice young veterinarians and medical researchers. We're very excited about the opportunities that we think we can provide here that haven't been available in the state of California. Kenny Goldberg, KPBS News.